What's going on, guys? Zuko back with another War Within video. <clears throat> Hope you're all doing very well. We're going to talk about Ellie Shaman. We're going to look at the Stormbringer build. We're going to look at a Grim Batol that I did. Um, I want to talk about my talents and stuff first, and then we'll get into the gameplay. Uh, we've got a really good clip coming as well of some crazy damage that I was able to pop off uh, on this Grim Batol. So, so far, we've been doing really well in the Mythic Plus department. I'm trying to push my rating about as high as I can get. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're at 2229 right now. We're getting, I gotta get nines basically, nines or tens on everything. I've done a couple untimed tens for the vault. I need to do, I think, one more untimed 10 to get a mythic reward. Remember, myth track vault rewards come from plus tens or above. So if you wanna get a mythic track vault reward by Tuesday, you should just go do a plus 10. You don't have to time it, you should have to do it, okay? Just remember that. My talents for Stormbringer are a little bit weird. <clears throat> Most people don't take these three talents here. Okay, I like taking them just for fun. And I've been experimenting with Elemental Blast as well. Now, say what you want about Elemental Blast. People will say that it's garbage now. I think it does have some merits. Um, it can absolutely have some merits, I think. And especially if you're running Aftershock. Because if you get a reset on it, it's like really strong. Um, the damage from it, it does more damage than Earthshock. It gives you a stat bonus, which they recently buffed like a couple, like, I don't know, a few months ago. They buffed it so that the stat bonus is actually better than it used to be. And you can see right here, I got a reset on Ellie Blast. So I got one Ellie Blast off. It gives me my Elemental Equilibrium buff. Then I get a second Ellie Blast going. So I actually have two Ellie Blast buffs coming up in a second. This is my second one. So you could get three if you got another reset. So comboing Ellie Blast with Aftershock, I think... I think can actually work really well. And with the Stormbringer tree, remember it's all about spending Maelstrom. So if I spend my 90 Maelstrom or 85, whatever it is on my Ellie Blast, and then it resets and then I spend it again, and then it resets and I spend it again, I've just spent like 270 Maelstrom or something in a very short period of time. So <clears throat> there is some really cool synergy here, I think with the Stormbringer tree. Um, I, I kind of like Ellie Blast in terms of helping to shore up our single target damage but again there's it's it's definitely got its detractions it's not it's not that great it, it's good for in certain circumstances i think it can be really good and in other circumstances it can be pretty bad if aftershock doesn't proc then it feels kind of bad right because this only costs 55 maelstrom so typically the other talents you will see is people will run something like thunderstrike ward into echoes into magma chamber this is a more typical tree. I'm just experimenting. So just, I'm just trying stuff out. We're just going to see how it works. Uh, in the Grim Batol footage I'm going to show you, I do not use Ellie Blast. I'm using Earthshock. So just keep it all with a grain of salt. I'm just trying to experiment with stuff and, and uh, give it a shot here. So um, those are my talents. We'll get to the footage here. We'll just jump in. I got to go back to, it's in the same stream, I think. Right? What was it? 137.49. So we will start it right here. There we go. So this is the Grim Batol, and um, I'm about 6'11 item level. I'm actually 6'10 in the footage there. Um, my stats are 25% crit, 22 haste. That's with a flask, excuse me. 22 mastery, 8 verse. Um, and um, th yeah, that's it. So I have a lot of crit because I've primarily geared myself as a resto shaman in raid, but crit is pretty good. We kind of want crit now. As an Ellie Shaman, uh, Master, I think, is also fine, but Crit is also quite good because of the Crit synergy on the tree, right? Things like Flash of Lightning giving you 10% more Crit on the uh, Twitch window is struggling. Things like the, the Crit that you get from your Flash of Lightning, the Crit that you're getting from your Tree Nature's Fury. There's Crit here from Stormcaller and Crit Damage, right? And then, of course, our big Crit Damage here, Primordial Fury, makes us have uh, our crits will do 275 percent more damage instead of 250 so really really big deal there so that's why crit is good that's why my build's kind of working well here's the opening pack you're going to pull the dragon in my opinion you want to pull the dragon up into this three pack and fight them together i've got the debuff on me which is going to put a puddle on the ground you got to watch out for that keep moving while casting use your spirit walker's grace here that's a great time to use it if you end up getting that debuff and then the knockback from the dragon doesn't actually do that much damage. I think it's a big DPS loss, actually, to, like, duck and hide. 
Maybe on a higher key, like a 10 or 12, you're going to have to get um, LOS that knockback. But for now, this Umbral Wind just doesn't actually hit that hard. It only did about half my health. So, sorry, I keep making that. There we go. So, that's not very much. It's like a big DPS loss, in my opinion, to um, go LOS for that. Again, higher keys, it's going to be different. Next pack, we're just doing a bunch of Tempest stuff. Bada bing, bada boom. We're doing lots of damage. Here comes the really big pull here. This is quite cool. Um... We completely pop off here on this fight. And we do have the Zalatath buff. So we have a big haste buff as well, which is really good. Full haste buff. We're going into this pull. Could not be better. Stormbringer's coming back. My Storm Ellie's up already. And uh, we just completely pop off here. I get a bunch of Earthquakes down. This is where I think the value of my build can be really good, where you can get resets from Aftershock on your Earthquake. And your Earthquakes can overload because I've taken Mountains Will Fall. So we're getting a ton of Earthquake damage here. Damage. Over 5 million there. I think it was, uh, is it over 5 million? Yeah, over 5 million now. 5.26, 5.3 million. Huge damage uh, coming out of our, our tree there. I think that's a lot to do with my Earthquakes overlapping, getting Aftershock procs like that's why i love these talents because you can have moments like that and aftershock procs like so much man it really does and we get multiple tempests because your aftershock is proccing and you're able to spend more maelstrom getting closer to your next tempest proc like that's how the synergy works together and i really really like it so awesome stuff there let's get past the dragon section here and we'll go to the boss fight Here's the first boss, General Umbris. Our single target damage, once again, I think is a little bit lower. I don't know that Ellie Blast makes it better. I think there's a case to be made for that. Again, you also get a lot of value out of Nature's Swiftness when you're taking Ellie Blast because you can cut off the cast time. That's the biggest difference, in my opinion, between Earthshock and Ellie Blast is that Earthshock is instant cast and Ellie Blast isn't. And of course, Earthshock costs a lot less, but... The biggest problem with Ellie Blast is that it has a cast time. So if you can negate the cast time somehow by pressing Nature Swiftness and using it on Ellie Blast every single time, that's a pretty big deal. That goes a long way to shoring up the one of the weaknesses of Ellie Blast. So that would be my um, that would be my thought process there. I don't know. Again, I don't know at the end of the day. I need to do some more testing on whether or not we actually will have more single target damage. Some of the bosses I did last night on stream where I had Ellie Blast. Um, it did seem like my single target was slightly higher, but it's a grain of salt at this point. I don't really know the true result. Either way, we're getting our butts kicked a little bit here on single target, but that's not really why we're here. The Stormbringer build is just very, very strong in AoE. So just remember, that's not really your role. Don't worry if you're doing less damage than other people. They're going to carry you on the single target fights. And then you're going to turn around and carry them on the AoE fights. That's how that's how it should go with this tree, okay? So there's the boss fight. <clears throat> we did well there. Here we go. Primordial Wave. I'm going to wait for my uh, Lava Surge to proc. I, it does right there. There we go. Boom. Now I got my Haste buff. And we can start cranking some AoE damage. We've got Tempest into Stormbringer here in a second. And you can see this is why we're here, right? We're cranking out the AoE damage. Astero does pop past us there, but on the next pack, every single pack with the Tempest build, you're going to have huge AoE damage, and I think that's probably the biggest value of it. There isn't really any cooldowns to play around. Your team doesn't have to worry about, like, waiting till you have something up. Like, you basically always have your cooldowns up because you're cooling down Stormbringer and Stormkeeper and Primordial Wave all the time. So... It, it just ends up meaning that you, you, you're not a liability, um, which is great. You can just pump damage, and you will. And it feels really good. And the animations and the sound effects for Tempest and the chain landing stuff, it's just disgusting, man. It's so, it's so good. Like, cannot stress how good it is. Now, here's what a lot of the higher groups are doing. They're pulling, instead of pulling the boss right now, which is what you would typically do, and you would fight him in this corridor right here, you're actually going to go and pull the rest of the trash along the inner ring. You want to hug the inner ring here, and the boss is going to patrol past you. You have to be really careful, though, and stand basically where I'm standing. I'm just going to DPS from here. He's going to walk past me, and we're going to keep pulling so that we can get some cooldowns back and so that... Uh, we have more room to fight this boss because the Forge Master, he requires a lot of room to fight him in because he puts fire all over the ground. Everything in that fight, this boss fight, puts fire on the ground. So um, it's a really big deal to just be able to kill all these mobs here. And you're going to need them for a percent anyway. This allows you, <clears throat> lets you skip 
some of the mobs in the the next trash area which is all about the, the all the curses uh start coming into effect those trash mobs are so annoying so it's really nice to be able to skip those we're gonna do this final pack right here big damage and then we fight the boss fight and we have this entire room now to you know use uh to fight the boss so it's really not an issue whatsoever and that's that's an awesome this is basically how you want to do this fight i would say for sure on the higher keys the boss just lasts for so long that um you need you really do need the room so there's the first fiery cleave we're going to start putting puddles on the ground here in a second um and then that's going to take me there's my puddle right here this takes up even more room those puddles are going to expand so again it's just you're going to need lots of room here and if you do this yeah then the boss chases the tank he puts even more fire on the ground but again if you have the whole area to work with then you're good to go so that's this boss fight in a nutshell there's a lot of pulsing damage but mostly you want to clear the boss room before you fight him and that is going to give you basically all the advantage that you need in order to be successful um on this fight not too hard at all okay on to the curse trash this trash is awful and you need your decurse here and you're also going to use stone form if you have dwarf or if you're a dark iron dwarf or regular dwarf um you're going to need to use your racial to get rid of the curses here's the curses right here nobody else in our team has curse removal except for me so it's a really big deal that i help a stereo popped his uh vampiric embrace there he just healed it off so that's good that's one way to deal with it he got unfortunately hit by the uh, frontal there but that's one way to deal with it and then we're going to get decurses going there's our aoe damage once again guys coming through big time helping out our team here comes another pack with the decurse and we just have to be ready to go i've got my racial i'm just going to use it whenever i need to and then i can decurse whoever gets hit here sometimes in the later pack there's a later pack that like double decurses like there's two guys that put curses out and you can get double decursed it's just insane so um it's uh it's become such a huge problem i got rid of the curse on the pally right there huge deal because it means he doesn't have to blow any mana right you're saving him a whole bunch of mana having to heal through that it's just a really big thing that you can bring to the group once again big aoe damage my cap totems on cooldown right now which is unfortunate i want to get the searing um the guys that are casting the searing bolt or searing flame whatever it is here's all the curses here one two three unfortunately i didn't get one. Oh no i did get one i immediately removed it with my rachel so there you go that's how you want to do that big damage here we're pumping big aoe damage this is why we're here this is the reason we're here big aoe damage help the team push through these aoe packs as best we can so that uh when it comes to the bosses and we're lagging behind that's when they can pick up the slack and help us out right Okay, we kill this pack here. Now, what you want to do in this next pull, do not pull these two guys. You want to pull this guy by himself, okay? You want to pull him by himself. And you can pull him off the bridge and just wait for him to come around the corner. Don't pull these warlocks. They're so annoying and you don't need them for, for percent. Just pull this guy by himself and avoid the beam. And you've got lots of room to fight him. This is the guy that's going to end up doing Ascendance, right? Which does a lot. He does Ascension, I think ends up doing pulsing aoe damage you can hold things like ancestral guidance or vampiric embrace here's your ascension you want to pop your vampiric embrace and I'm, I'm doing ag right now just to help out the healer this is a lot of damage so you want to help out your healer big time and again we're doing a lot of damage back to him so it doesn't really matter but that's how you can help out and then you can skip across the bridge here and you don't have to worry about pulling those warlocks here's the pack where you can get double curse got to be very careful with this seer mind is a very important kick you want to stun it you want to kick it you want to knock it up whatever you can do to deal with it you want to kick seer mind because that's going to stun somebody there's the curses coming out i'm going to get um my paladin right away i think or no i get myself there we go he healed himself he healed it he healed it off and i decurse myself good to go so again another huge reason to help that here's ascension number one uh, we're popping off here. Big damage. We got to pop up. You can use your... Um, I'm using my Thunderstorm, by the way, every time on those ads that come down, the Zalatath ads. <clears throat> you should do that. It's very reliable. It's the knock-up version, not the knock-back version. You can see I got them all right there. So, uh, again, these are all these little ways that you can help your team be successful. Bring Decurse. Bring your knock-up. Bring your Cap Totem. Those three are massive in almost every key that I've run so far. Those are really important buttons, and they will they will help you out in a big way. Primordial Wave, get the Lava Burst going. We have a big haste window right now, popping off with the AoE damage. Over 2 million once again. Once I get Stormkeeper back, it'll be even better. Decurses, once again. I can racial myself, but I chose to 
I messed that up. I, I messed that up. I should have waited for the second D curse, but the pally's popping off, so it doesn't really matter. But you can see, guys, you can do damage and get your utility going at the same time. It's, um, that's kind of, when you get to the higher level of keys, this is going to be expected of you, that you're going to be bringing the knock-up, the cap totem, the decurse, the, the healing from AG while you're doing damage. Like, you have to be able to do both those things at the same time if you want to time these uh, bigger keys. This is only a plus eight. It's not even that big yet, but, uh, you know, for lots of people, an eight is pretty significant at this point. Got stunned by Seer Mine. These two guys, a lot of uh, higher key groups are just not even pulling these Lava Benders. They're basically fighting the boss like in the corner, way off to the left there. But if you're going to pull these guys, I would highly recommend that you DPS one of them down to basically zero first, then kill the second one. So you can see right now, one of these guys is much lower than the other one. We're just cleaving onto the other one so that they're not doing ascension at the same time. You want one of them to be doing ascension at, at a time. You don't want two of them. So that guy dies, and then boom, now we're going to have a second ascension coming through here. But that's how you want to do this pull. You want to just basically single target nuke down one of those guys so that if you get double ascension, you're going to die like 100%. You're just going to die. The healer can't heal through that. You'd have to pop like every cooldown and it would be just such a waste. So here is the uh, Draga Shadowburner boss fight. The adds are the most important thing. Once again, D curse huge here. I also have my racial, but I can't use it yet. I'll use it on the next one. The adds are the most important thing here. You want to slow them down. I would highly recommend you use Earthbind Totem or Earth Grab Totem. Whatever one works, you want to put that down on the mob's head when they spawn because um, slowing those mobs is a huge deal. Huge, huge deal. Also, we did not have Bloodlust here. There's got to be a better place we can put Bloodlust. Like, we should probably be Bloodlusting before we get to this boss if it's up. And I should go check the tape and see if it's up earlier. But basically, we're never going to Bloodlust this fight because we want to Bloodlust the last fight. So um, we need to work on that. That's something we got to work on as a team. I cap totem the ad there, and then I'm blowing up the ads here big time. Popping uh, whatever. I didn't pop AG. Though. I'll use AG in the next one. We got Stormkeeper back up. Our damage here is pretty bad, but I'm mostly here to try and manage the ads. And then I want like my rogue and my, sh uh, my shadow priest to be really blowing up the boss. So whenever the ads spawn, I'm also here for the D curse, right? I'm just helping out with this utility. Again, I, I was a little late on it there, but whenever the ads spawn, I'm really dropping all my utility here, trying to make sure that I can keep control over those guys and that I can blow them up. See, I'm, I put a full Tempest into that guy, into an Earthshock, into a Tempest, into another Earthshock so that they just die really quickly. And the other guys can just keep doing damage on the boss. Remember, guys, these keys are like, it's a team effort, right? So... If I'm managing the ads and blowing them up really, really quickly, that's a huge deal for the rest of my team. They don't have to pump any of their cooldowns into that. If I'm getting rid of D curses, that's good for the healer, right? You can contribute this way. Here comes Stormkeeper. I'm going to do as much damage as I possibly can into these guys. Primordial Wave, Lava Burst, Chain Lightning, Chain Lightning, Earthquake, and they're almost dead already. So that's, that's huge damage for me right there. Boom, the ads are dead, and we can go back to the boss. So this was kind of like my role, I felt like. And sometimes on different fights, you just have to assume a different role, and it will help you be very successful when it comes to an overall key. If you just figure out what you're supposed to do in the key, um, it, it'll, it'll always just be way better for you, and it'll be better for your team. So that's it. That's the boss fight. Got him down to 50%, and he's dead. Next pack here, uh, again, this is our AoE damage. We're doing 3 million. Again, boom, our boss fight damage is horrible, but our AoE damage is massive. So that's all that really matters. There, That's where we're contributing there. 3.5 million damage there. Here comes Stormkeeper. Boom, like it's just crazy. Getting rid of the decurse stuff again. Back to doing damage. Popping off here. Big Earthquakes. Big Chain Lightning. It's a lot of fun. I love this build. I think it's really, really good damage-wise, of course, but I also just think it's fun to play, man. The sound effects, the animations on Tempest, they're just way too strong. Way too good. There's the um, knockback and the puddle from this guy once again. I I, I will re-advocate. I think you should just stay out here and DPS him the whole time and let the healer deal with the knockback. I just don't think it's that big of a deal. Last packs here. We got to watch out for the Corruptors. They're going to corrupt people, and it does a lot of damage uh, to a single person. So if it, if it happens to you, you need to pop a defensive. So you can see right now he's going to start casting Corrupt. 
There it is right there. And it's going to go on to the Paladin. So the Paladin needs to pop a defensive. He needs to keep himself alive. And the healer has to pump single target healing into that person. You can also help with things like Ancestral Guidance. And um, again, or the Shadow Priest could do Vampiric Embrace. All those things are really helpful. We'll do this next one here. And then we get to the last two. And it's two of them together. So you have Double Corrupt coming out. Very dangerous pack. Lynx tries to pull... Some of the mobs and not all of the mobs because if the little ads in these packs if the little ads die they buff the big guys and then the big guys when they start corrupting people they do way more damage so um you want to you have to kill the little ads there's really no way to not kill them but unfortunately they're going to buff the bigger guys so you can see the paladin taking a lot of damage there from corrupt don't get hit with mind piercer I still have my, I have my defenses, so I'm getting hit with Corrupt now. So I hit my Totem. There's my Totem Shield. That's going to help out a little bit, right? Let the Paladin recover. There we go. That's how you can help contribute, okay? Nine minutes left for the boss. We have nine minutes for the boss fight, which is pretty, pretty good, okay? We have Bloodlust as well. So we're going to Lust right off the rip because um, it's, the, it's the most uptime you're going to have on the boss, in my opinion. Primordial Wave. Oh, we get a Lava Burst going. Get my lightning bolt going. Watch the tentacles here. Whenever he's doing this pulse thing, he's adding tentacles to the arena. You got to watch out for... If they land on your feet, you can just get stunned immediately. If you touch a tentacle on this boss fight, you will get stunned. And it's very, very my, bad. So I'm going to hold Stormkeeper. So once again, I have a particular role to play on this boss fight am i going to do the most single target damage on this boss fight no not by a mile it's not even close so do i care about that no am i going to burn my stormkeeper on a single target mob which is just the boss no i'm going to hold it i'm going to hold my stormkeeper for this moment right here okay here comes stormkeeper here comes the ads and we're going to annihilate the ads okay boom chain lighting boom into an earthquake a couple earthquakes into a tempest proc boom so this is where I'm contributing to the team by making sure that all the ads are immediately dead so that we can move on, get back to doing boss damage, and we don't have to worry about the ads killing the tank because the ads do a crazy amount of damage to the tank. So again, if you're playing Ellie Shaman, I would highly encourage you to th start thinking differently about how you're approaching every key. You need, to re you need to sort of think about what your build is doing. It's not just about blasting numbers, right? You need to think hard about, like, what am I able to actually contribute with my spec? What am I really good at doing? If I'm really good at doing AoE damage, I need to hold all my AoE cooldowns and just annihilate the ads. Here comes round two. The totem is out. Primordy, there's a Tempest proc into Earthquake, into Earthquake, into some Chain Lightnings. Look at how dead those are, man. Into Stormkeeper, another big couple Chain Lightnings. And then all the ads are actually completely dead within like eight seconds of them getting to the boss. That is a huge deal. And I've run lots of other Grim Batols earlier this week where the ads just like took forever to die. And it's such a such a frustrating thing to have to think about. So this is how you can contribute and you should as an Ellie Shaman if you're playing the Stormbringer build especially. If you're doing the Ancestor build, you can definitely focus a bit more on single target because your Ancestors are going to be able to pump Single target damage if you need it. Maybe you have somebody else in the group, like a Rhett Paladin. If he's there, he can take care of the ads, and you take on more of a single target role. So try to think about this differently, guys. When you're doing these keys, try to think about your role and what you're able to pump out. Here comes Stormkeeper once again. We're just going to... These ads are going to disappear right here. And they're gone. Didn't even matter because the boss was dead, but... Anyway, that's how it goes. There's 1.28 million overall, by the way. 1.28 million... DPS overall. A um, lot of damage there. I'm going to see. There's the damage. There's the overall. So, Chain Lightning is our first. Then Earthquake. Uh, the Battered Red Drake. That's why our overall damage is a little bit higher, right? So, just remember that. We would lose 10%. So, we'd lose one, um, 1. 1.2 million. Or we, so, we go down to like... Instead of being 1.28 million, it would go down to 1.15 1, 1. million. 1.15 million is basically where we ended the key, okay? Overall, without the Battered Red Drake there. So, Lightning Rod doing big damage. The biggest reason why Lightning Rod is so high is because we have Aftershock, 
procking additional earthquakes. So it's like earthquake, 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 earthquake. That adds four lightning rods. And then you do chain lightning and it just makes the lightning rod damage go crazy. So that's lightning rod is getting more value because of aftershock. And that's a sort of a hidden thing that you're not always going to think about, but that's why that's there. Tempest doing a lot of damage. Our hero tree all together, Tempest plus this stuff over here. This is um two, uh, three, three percent, let's call it, right? Uh, so we're doing it's like 10.5% of our damage just from Tempest and Awakened Storms, which is very, very good. And then the um, Lightning Rod damage, you can't even account for that as well. So a lot of fun, guys. That is the Stormbringer build in a Grim Batol plus eight. And again, that is how you can pilot the Stormbringer build in a key like that. Um, I think your primary role is to do AoE damage. And I would try to think about it that way. Don't try to like do as much single target damage as possible on the boss face to try and like catch up to everybody else on the meters. Just think about it in a different way. Think critically about what you're supposed to be doing and play for the team. And if you do that, you will time way more keys than if you're just focusing on my numbers and my DPS and getting it as high as I possibly can. That's not the point. Try to play to your strengths, not your weaknesses, okay? Thank you guys so much again for watching. Let me know if you have any comments down below. Remember, I was just experimenting with some of these talents here, so don't flame me too hard for some of these. Um, I know some of you will, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. Ask me any questions down there. Thank you so much again for watching. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one.